For those of you that watched this video yesterday, I apologize because some of the explanations I gave for the fixed level of detail expressions weren't quite accurate. Uh, the, the way that I explained them yesterday, I was actually explaining them as if they were include fixed level of detail expressions. So I'm going to go back through the video today and get it right. So the first example we want to look at here is how many customers placed how many orders by region and product. So the first thing I need to do is determine when was uh, how many orders did each customer make. So I'm going to create a calculated field and I'm going to call it customer order frequency. And for this, I'm going to use a fixed level of detail expression. So I'm going to start by adding in my mustachios and typing in fixed. Now I know I want to do this for each customer. So I'm going to put customer name. And then I want to count, oops, count distinct the number of orders. So order ID. So essentially what this is saying in Tableau terms is it's saying for each customer, count the unique number of orders. So what I do when I look at level of detail expressions is I take the word fixed and I replace it with for each. So in this case for each customer count the number of orders. So that's easy enough and that returns as a um, aggregate measure. So I'm going to go ahead and make that discrete, make it a dimension, and I'm going to drag that up to the columns. And then if I simply look at the um, count of customers, so I'm going to right click and drag customer to the rows, make it a count distinct, I can see the distribution of my customers. So in this case, this question would, be, would really be how many customers placed how many orders? So that's what this question is answering now. So we can see the distribution and we could see that uh, 100 customers placed four orders, 100 customers placed five orders, etc. Now you may, the best way to probably look at this is probably to make it continuous because then, uh, and let me make it back to bars, oops, because now we can see any of the gaps in the data. Okay, but let me go ahead and uh, yeah, I'll just leave it like that for now. Okay, so now if I want to change this question, let me go back and I'm going to, I'm going to set my, reset my question here to, to uh, let's make it uh, by region. So if I want to make this by region, um, I could throw a region onto color, or actually let me go ahead and put region in the columns. And uh, this, the, the way that the level of detail expression is written right now doesn't really uh, solve, that, uh, solve that question. So what we need to do now is we need to tell Tableau to count. Uh, let me find my calculation here. So I need to add region into my fixed. So this is going to tell me uh, for each customer and region, count the unique number of orders. So this will tell me essentially how many customers placed how many orders by region. Alright, so now you can see if I undo and I redo, you can see the shape of my graph has changed. So I've got a better distribution. <clears throat> Alright, what if I want to also extend this now and say um, by region and product category. Now all I would need to do now is if I put product category in the view, again this isn't really answering the question correctly so I'm going to, I need to edit my uh, level of detail expression and I want to add product category into the uh, first part of the level of detail expression. So now this is saying for each customer, region, and product category count the num unique number of orders. Okay, so let me go ahead and make this a bit bigger so we don't get a little scrolly bar there. All right, so again uh, anytime I see fixed I just replace it with for each and then I list out the dimensions um, and what Tableau is doing now is if, if I add other dimensions into the view essentially Tableau will ignore those because that's the way it fixed. So for example if I put ship mode onto color 
Um, my my uh, level of detail expression, the one that's doing my uh, my axis here, or not my axis, my customer order frequency, is ignoring ship mode. That's essentially what a fixed level of detail expression does. It forces it to be at the at this set of dimensions and only at this set of dimensions. So let me take ship mode back off, and I'm going to put region on color. And there we go. We have a nice nice little graph now. So I'll probably go ahead and hide my field labels. There, we can leave it on there, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so now we get the better distribution that we were looking for, and I would then go ahead and change my custom order frequency to discrete. That looks kind of neat as a line chart, but I'm going to make it bars. And uh, go ahead and set the size, maybe shrink that down a bit. So now we can see the distribution a bit better. Okay, so the idea here is, is uh, we want to show the gaps in the data. I do believe if I switch this back to discrete, uh, and I change it to, uh, nope, let's, let's undo that. Go back here, there we go. Okay, so that's our customer order frequency. Now let's look at product frequency. So how many products do we sell in how many regions? So uh, what I want to do now is I'm going to start by, let's go ahead and put region in the view. And uh, we wanna count the distinct number of products. So let's do that and we can see how many products have sold in each region. So let's start by that and let's ignore the year and the quarter. So how can we create this 1052, et cetera, as a level of detail expression? So I'm gonna create a calculated field and I'm gonna call this uh, something like regions per product. And uh, actually, let me cancel that. I think I have this backwards here. So I want to put uh, product name here and add all. And then I want to do a count distinct on region. So let me bring region here and make it count distinct. So that's actually what I'm looking for. So we can see this first product sells in four regions. So I'm going to replicate that as a, as a level of detail expression. So I'm going to call this uh, regions per product. And then again, we're going to, my, the way I'm going to write this out is I want to say for each product, how many, um, count the unique number of regions. So again, with for each, I'm going to just go ahead and type in fixed. That gives me my, my left mustachio. So for, <clears throat> for each product, I want to count the distinct, the unique number of regions. And then close it with a mustachio and hit OK and uh, regions per product. If I just drag that into the view, you'll see I get the same numbers. Excellent, that's what I was hoping for. Because now if I take product name out of the view, you can see um, uh, what, I, what I want to do now is, let me go back, take this back out, and let's take this off the view, take that off. Okay, so there we go. So what I want to do is I want to take regions per product and put that up here as a dimension. And I sh uh, we only have four regions, so we shouldn't ever have more products, uh, more than four regions. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, drag uh, count distinct of uh, product name. Let's see, product, da -da -da, where is it? Product name. I want to go ahead and right click and drag that to the rows and do a count distinct on product. So this is telling us that 93 products only sell in one region whereas 462 products sell in four regions. Great, okay, so now if we want to do this by year and quarter, uh, let's say I put uh, maybe, uh, let's make this uh, continue our discrete quarters here, and let's put years here, and essentially because I have my level of detail expression for regions per product, because this is a fixed level of detail expression, Tableau is ignoring the year and the quarter. So the way that I would write this out is I would say, uh, so I'm going to fix my sentence here. So for each product year and quarter, count the, dis count the unique number of regions. So um, I could probably just put uh, order date on here. So let's see what that does and hit OK. And uh, that messes everything up now because it's looking at the unique dates. So let's go ahead and edit this again. So for each product, year, and quarter. 
And what I want to do now is I'm going to actually add in a date trunk. So I'm going to do date trunk uh, at the year level of my order date. And then I'm going to include a date trunk at the quarter level of my order date. Okay, so now what this is telling me is it's saying for each uh, for each uh, product, year, and quarter, count the unique number of regions. Okay, hit apply, hit OK. And now we can see we uh, we have four quarters. It looks like just right here is the only is the only region and quarter combination where we actually have four quarters. So that's pretty neat. So again, I would probably make this uh, uh, continuous. And let's go ahead and throw uh, maybe quarter onto color. So I'm going to duplicate that out onto color and make these bars. And let's go ahead and maybe drag those up. Okay, so we get something like that. Uh, if I go ahead and make my uh, years per product a decimal, you'll see this will fill in the view a bit better. So that looks a bit better to me. And uh, I want to fix that. There we go. So we can do something like that. So that looks pretty neat. I like that. I like that look. So uh, that answers the question, how many products sell in how many regions by year and quarter? Okay, the last example I want to look at is what is the total number of customers acquired by region by day? So in order to do that one, we need to create a calculated field that is, uh, let's call it something like first order date per customer. And what we're looking to do here is we want to say for each customer, um, calculate uh, the minimum order date. Okay, great. So what I want to do now is uh, I know this is going to be fixed because I want to fix it at the customer level because that's what my for each is telling me. For each customer, return the minimum order date. And close it with a mustachio. Oops, sorry about that. And now again, replace the word fixed with for each, for each customer, calculate the minimum order date. Hit OK. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and make that continuous. Oops, let me right click on it and make it continuous. And I'm going to drag that up to my columns and make it continuous days. And then on my rows, <clears throat> I want to simply just put a count distinct of customer name. And we get something like that, which isn't all that useful. So again, let me look at my calculation here for each customer. What's the minimum order date? So maybe in this case, I want to go ahead and let's make this a running total so that we can see how this changes across time. So for um, so now this is telling me calculate the running total uh, by day. All right, great. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on my mark labels on the end of the line and let's match it to the mark color. Okay, so now this is telling me uh, we've, it took us, uh, you know, however many days to reach 795 customers, but I want to be able to break that down by region. So if I throw a region onto color, we get a set of numbers here, but those, that's not really answering the question that we have here. Because if I look at my level of detail expression, uh, my calculation here, it's ignore because I fixed it on customer name, it's ignoring region. So I want to say for each customer and region, calculate the minimum order date. So I want to add region into the view. Uh, I'm sorry, into my calculation. Now this is again replace fixed with for each. So for each customer and region, calculate the minimum order date. And we get um, slightly different results this time. So I need to edit my table calc. And it looks like, so now it's saying for each region, calculate the running total of um, uh, the running total of customers by day. So good, we're all set. And uh, that's about it. Again, apologies for the mistake in the video yesterday. And hopefully this was a better explanation for you today. All right, have a great day.